Hello, I would like to show you how to find the first perfect numbers and I'll show you in the way that's compatible with test driven development. It also shows you the way how to think if you struggle with getting to uh, getting bigger programs run. So this is the this is the assignment, find the first perfect numbers. Well I can write that down. I'm going to uh, well Let's do for loop. Oh no, well, let's do a while loop. While one. No, that's not true. While and found is less than four, then do things. Initially, I found zero. Oh yeah, and I'm doing this on purpose. Um, I'm doing. I didn't prepare this exercise, so I tried to be to do it as dumb as possible. Uh, which is like natural. Uh, you won't see me uh, think very deeply. You'll just see me trying a lot. But in the end, uh, I will test everything as well, so I can be sure about results. Although it will be, um, it will be a bit of trying out, and you'll see how fast it will go. So well, there are not f no first per four perfect numbers found. Um, we'll probably have to uh, iterate over some kind of number and value equals one I think that uh, perfect numbers are always positive are always positive positive um, well if it's perfect value then If it's a perfect number, then I want to see it on the screen. So let's see out value. And we have found a, a new perfect number. Well, this looks um, solid to me. If it's a perfect number, then show the value. Oh, we have to inc increase the value. And then, well, let's see if it runs. It doesn't, of course. And that's just fine. Let's make it to compile. So we need IO stream to get C out running. Is perfect doesn't work yet. Now I'm going to write a minimal function that makes everything run again. Constant value. And I'm going to return true. And now I can see um, like the first perfect four perfect numbers. Although this is completely incorrect, it's time to make some tests. Let's do that. But the cool thing is it works, it does something. And um, so in test driven development, first I'm going to break my code, fix it, and then usually you would check it in on your on kit or a version control system. I will just go break it again. All right, break it. Well, I'm going to add a function called test broken the code because there's no such thing as test so I'm adding it for a test up oh, works next phase we're going to add a test that uh, breaks well we know perfect numbers perfect numbers oh negative numbers negative numbers are never perfect numbers we know this so I'm going to write assert is perfect of a minus one should be false and this can be shortened to assert not is perfect. This crashes because assert is not defined. Let's include assert then include C assert. Here we go. And we broke the test. Well done. So now with minimal effort we're going to fix the test. Well if the value is small equal to zero because it can also be zero is also not a perfect number. Return false. Everything works. Everything works. Right, so let's add a new test that uh, breaks the code. Um, well, the first thing I'm going to write is a perfect number. A perfect number. A number is perfect. Is perfect if the sum of 
its proper divisors, whatever those are, I'll show you show in a bit, equals that number. We're going to write that down. Return sum get sum of get proper divisors of that value equals the uh, value. So this is what a perfect number is and I'm just going to write it down if the sum of the proper divisors of that value equals that uh, value and should work. Of course it doesn't compile yet. We need to get proper divisors should work. Well the proper divisors of a value a vector of integers to pro get proper divisors of a value, constant value. It's a factor of int, it's gonna return nothing. Get sum, you can also do that. Int get sum, and that thing sums a vector of integers, const std vector int reference. A v and it should return the sum but for now it returns nothing. Let's see if it works. Oh, we need to include vector, sure, let's do that. Let's see if it works. It works. Does something. Um, actually this thing is beeping or, or I don't know what is what's the problem. It crashed. It's a bit small for you guys but uh, let's run it on a on debug mode. Then it will probably crash somewhere actually it doesn't, it's still running. Alright, so something went wrong and that's just fine because these are all like stupid tests. So I'm going to write, um, I'm going to test get some first uh, because well that's the easiest one. Um, I know that this, if I have a vector, an empty vector, that should be zero. If an empty vector doesn't have a sum. So Let's see if that works. Sum of empty vector must be zero. And I'm going to say first, and you can crash afterwards. Great, so this works. And I'm going to move this assert here, so I want to see if all the tests run, because in the program something is wrong. But uh, so this uh, assertion fails. Uh, that's great. Actually, I'm just going to write return now that our code is clean again. It should return a zero. And now the code is tested, but then does nothing. But that's uh, that's good enough for now. All right. What it did do is I added a test that passed, and you should definitely delete those. Some of. So I'm going to delete it, but I'm, I'll, be, I'll be reusing it. So a vector with one element, which is 42, sum of vector of one, of one element equals the value of that element. So this fails, and this is definitely true, because well, we always return a zero. Well, um, we can use accumulate, which is um, an algorithm, but I will do it in the in the in the beginner way, alright, so I sum equals zero for, well, I'm going to iterate of all elements using a ranged for loop, and I'm not going to use, uh, um, like of course you can use accumulate, but uh, it's for, uh, made for beginners this video, so up, there we go, return sum, and it expected, uh, constant reference, there it goes and it works again. So let's see if we can still break get sum. So I think the, the sum of 1 and 2 should be 3. Does work? Nah, still works. Delete it. Um, well, let's, uh, let's, let's try if we can, can we get it to break. It should be 6. No, don't. So we've, we're done testing get sum because I cannot write a test anymore that breaks it. So I'm not gonna add well, you could argue to add just one, like this test, because it has documentation value. So I will leave it like this, but I think more tests is, is actually redundant. 
some, I will just write some documentation, sum of factor of two elements equals the sum of those. Well, it's also uh, uh, stupid. I think these comments are utterly useless. So I've cleaned up my code and it works. So get sum is a solid. Let's get the proper divisors. The proper divisors, so you notice I use three slashes here because uh, it's for documentation, for a reader, not for a programmer. But if I would publish my code, then you can use Doxygen to use these uh, tags to make nice documentation web pages from it. The proper divisors of a value are the divisors that are proper. Nah, yeah, how do you write that down? The proper divisors of a value are the values you can divide it by without with a remainder of zero this excludes um, the value oh exclude the value itself so this uh, for example 2 has 1 and 2 which you can divide by 1 and 2 3 let's add some uh, let's do it like this I like these examples. These, these will become tests, you'll see. So 3 has only 1 and 3. And we should exclude the value itself. So 4 has 1 and 2. So this, so 1 is always there. So 5, so prime numbers only have a 1. And we have 6 that will have a 1, a 2 and a 3. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's add a first test. Assert get proper divisors of one. That should be empty. Well, yeah, let's take two first. That should be a factor of one. Let's see if this works. Expected primary expression. Like, could it be that the assert has some problems with it? Get proper divisors of two. Get proper divisors of two. Constant value. Yeah, it's so it's complaining about that the, it doesn't want the assert, the assert to contain uh, this factor there. Perhaps we can trick it, being more or help it, being more explicit. Let's see. But assert is a preprocessor um, statement. So ah, great. So this works. So the sum of the proper so the so two should return a one, which it doesn't. Well, let's go back to the function. So two should return a one. Oh, easy, everything should return a one. Like the first thing, this will not be the case is when it's four. So we could add the test like this one. Assert a three only has one proper divisor, but this will pass, so I'm going to remove that one. But 4 needs a 1 and a 2, and this is a test that breaks again. So now we're going to fix the test again. Now we probably need to think. I'm going to let the counter run from 1 to value in steps of 1. And I'm going to create a factor of proper divisors, proper divisors, divisors. Actually I'm already going to add the one. And I'm not doing this in the smartest way because well yeah, no I'm not, I'm doing this like this. Not I'm not going to think too much. Alright so uh, what we're going to do is if the value can divide it by i um, with no remainder, then it's a proper divisor. So we're going to add that i, and then we return the proper divisors.
So let's see if it works. Hey, it works. Let's see if we can use six because so this one, so let's do f let's try five out first. Five should have only a one. Does that still work? Works. Six has one, two, and three. Six has one, two, and three. Does that work? Works. So we can just well done. Now we're going to finally get to the meat of the code, so the sum of the perfect numbers. Um, let's see if we can break it. So this perfect already is implemented. So we know for certain that 6 is perfect. Doesn't break it. 7 is not perfect. You know, actually I'm going to leave 6 because that's nice for documentation. Uh, 7 is not uh, perfect. Well, the first perfect number then is uh, 24. Is that true? Let's take a look. Uh, wiki perfect number 6 and the next one is 28. Alright, so uh, that's why I just look it up. So the second perfect number is 28. So this 28 should be perfect. Also works. Well, blimey, it appears to work. And then, well, we can remove this because well, it's already getting a bit redundant. I'm going to run the code and let's see what happens. So it's doing stuff. And I'm going to make it look for just like a two. This takes too long. What is going wrong? Well, I'm just going to see out. Still to see out. Value. Well, I'm going to move this. Still to see out. Value. Let's see if it's doing. Ah, the value is never increased. Ah, so the value increases. That's great. And now we can find the first two perfect numbers because now I just and now we can find the first four and we did it so we found our first four perfect numbers so what I've showed you is that I didn't do smart stuff you can really improve this thing um, using accumulate returns to accumulate but um, I won't uh, this should be a for example, yeah, because it's um, it's intended for beginners to just show the test-driven development uh, idea. All right, so I hope this was a useful video, and I wish you a very nice day. Bye.